Hello and welcome to the Craft Beer Corner. For today's beer review, we're jumping in to a big barrel-aged English-style barley wine from Fremont Brewing. Uh, Fremont is another one of those brewers I have had nothing but fantastic beers from so far. And it's been a while since I've reviewed one, and this is one I got from Tavor, oh, maybe a couple months back that I was setting aside. Uh, the specific beer is called Brew 5000. It clocks in at 12% ABV, and Fremont Brewing is based in Seattle, Washington. So, uh, label art, just a nice, clean, typical Fremont design. But they do mention on here, in case you're wondering about the name, uh, Brewer Brewed in Celebration of Our... 5,000th brew. So the 5,000th beer right here. Uh, bourbon barrel aged English style barley wine. You know me, this is my favorite beer style of all. I've had a lot of their big stouts, some really, really top tier stouts. In fact, I think some of the Beer Advocate top rated stouts in the world are brewed by Fremont. So I'm really excited to try this bourbon barrel aged barley wine. So we're gonna be scoring underneath the edge of this wax dipped cap as we always do. All right, I think I did a decent job there. Let's see if we can get under for leverage, get that right off, perfect. Just gonna check for any residual little wax bits so it doesn't drop in the glass. Again, we're using our nice stout glass. I don't have a dedicated barley wine glass, but the tulip shape of the stout glass works very well for barley wines for the same reason it works well for stouts. So let's just get this poured right in. All right, there we go. Yeah, this is a um, little bit on the darker side. You'll normally, normally see them a little more caramel color in hue, a little lighter, but this is certainly in the spectrum. Um, typically, the English style barley wines are the ones you'll see that are a little darker like this, but not always. They can run the gamut. As we know from barley wines, they're very active in terms of carbonation, big beers, a lot of activity. So they will often form really poor heads. Some will form great, some kind of in the middle of the road, depending on the size of the carbonation. This one did a decent job. Though visually, I can see it's pretty active and it's mostly medium bubbles. So I don't know how long that's gonna stick around. And visually, yeah, it's not pitch black. It's just a dark, dark brown. So right in the spectrum of a barley wine, I was getting aromas as soon as I started to pour this. So I'm gonna get right up on it to see what I see. Oh yeah, 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 smells like classic barley wine. So you can distinctly smell the bourbon barrel. That comes through very clearly, but as do all of the other classic barley wine underpinnings. Smells very strongly of caramel and toffee, and for sure, plums, prunes, figs. Those are the big three that almost always seem to be in a barley wine aroma and flavor profile in my experience. Sometimes there's some deviations. You'll get like apricots. Sometimes you'll get some other different stone fruit, but it's normally deep, rich, darker fruit like that that are hearty. They're, they're bigger, heavier, which really pairs well with the beer style. It's not a light beer style. 12.2% ABV, barrel age. It's gonna be a big beer. So without further ado, we're gonna jump right in and see what this one's about. Mm -hmm. Oh man, oh, that is so good. Oh gosh, mm, I love barley wine. This is a really, really well done. I've had um, several traditional English style barley wines over the years. Um, this, I can already tell you, is the one with which I am most impressed. They tend to be less bold and in your face, a little more subtle and also a little darker, but the flavor properties, they're not quite as intense. This one has a real intensity and it's not just coming from the bourbon barrels. It's also coming from the actual flavors of the combination of the malts and yeast. So before we get into the flavor profile, let's talk texture. This has a medium heavy body. It maybe doesn't feel quite as heavy as you would expect for a beer in this ABV range, but that's kind of typical with the barley wine too. They're kind of all over the board. You never really know what you're gonna get. This one's medium heavy. So I would say it's above average for the style in the ABV range, but it's, it's not as heavy as maybe you would expect. In terms of the mouthfeel, this feels exactly as I expected. There's a boatload of resistance to it. This one in particular, when you agitate on the palate, does get even thicker. There's this real sense of thickness and viscosity. It gets quite creamy. It's very nice. It's got a very lush mouthfeel. 
in terms of carbonation, you can feel on the palate. This one, not really. You sometimes can, very much like you can typically with a porter, but not always on a barley wine. This one, I don't really feel the carbonation as I'm moving it around the palate. I just feel the weight and the texture, but it feels very, very nice. So, let's talk about the flavor. The first thing you get immediately upon swallowing is just this big whooshing blossoming of that bourbon barrel coming right to the forefront. And there's a wonderful sense of warmth that comes along with that. Doesn't taste boozy, but it tastes distinctly of bourbon. There's a lot of vanilla undertones, a lot of kind of brown sugar, caramelized brown sugar undertones. It's absolutely delicious. Uh, about a second or two behind that starts the opening up, which is a bit slower of the malt bill and the yeast characteristics. And it is exactly as you get on the aroma. It is those classic barley wine traits that I love so much. It's a combination of caramel and toffee and figs and plums and just deep, rich, dark fruit. There's a ton of layering to it. And there is some other end other interplaying elements here. There's a little bit of a grape-like quality, but I'd say it borders more closely to like a raisin. Um, so again, we're talking these deep, rich, dark fruits, but it's not raisin forward. I would say it's more fig, uh, toffee, and caramel forward than any anything else. And certainly with that bourbon barrel, it mixes very, very well, especially with the subtlety of the kind of vanilla accents and the caramelized brown sugar accents that really is coming off of the bourbon barrel. It is absolutely playing just beautifully in this medley of flavors and they're big and they are bold and they are absolutely delicious. So we're gonna jump in for sip number two, let everything re-intensify, see if we missed anything, then we're gonna talk about this finish. This is a very, very good barley wine right here. Take two. Oh man, bourbon, vanilla, brown sugar, figs, plums, pruny-like quality. There's a little bit of an apricot sense to this as well I didn't get on the first. Yeah, nice vanilla undercurrents, caramelized brown sugar, toffee, caramel, it's all in here. It's just ribbons of flavors, they're all intermingling. Yeah, there is a little bit of a raisin-like uh, quality to it as well. It's, it's subtle, it kind of ebbs and flows in and out of the, the other kind of flavor compounds. What really is dominant on this is the bourbon, the overarching bourbon and its character traits and the kind of toffee. Toffee, I think, overpowers the caramel in this, but they taste distinctly different and you can pick them both out. And probably the fig would be the next most prominent kind of, of, of the fruity accents that are coming through, but it's absolutely delicious. This is just a well put together barley wine. For my money, this is the best English style version I've had to date. A Little bit different than their American counterparts, but all of the same beer style and absolutely love it. Barley wines, uh, my favorite style of them all. Big, bold, in your face, slow sipping beers, and this one is extremely well done. Uh, to choose this style for the 5000th brew, I don't think I could have picked it better myself. I absolutely love it. I'm gonna take my time, sip on this beer, count my scores. When we come back, we'll get this one ranked from top to bottom. All right, now that we've gotten to enjoy this beer, we're gonna get it ranked. This is Fremont Brewing Company's Brew 5000, an English style barley wine that's been bourbon barrel aged, clocking in at 12.2% ABV. Fremont Brewing is based in Seattle, Washington. So, starting with the aroma. The aroma on this one, as with most barley wines and certainly barrel aged, it was absolutely pungent. Had all of the classic underlying aromas you expect in a barley wine, plus the added uh, elements that came through from the bourbon. Aroma was top tier, it gets a 10 out of 10. For the taste, I really, really enjoyed this one. While my personal preference is more American type barley wines, a classic English barley wine is also very, very good. They're very similar, but American ones tend to have a slight deviation in the direction they go. But this was very much a classic, and then the bourbon barrel is this added bonus. And it had all of the right flavors, massively pungent intensity, every flavor that came through really balanced well with one another. It was an absolute treat. Taste gets a 10 out of 10. For the body, 
The body on this was above average, but it was not as heavy as you would expect for a beer of this style in this ABV range. Body gets a 7 out of 10. For the mouthfeel, mouthfeel on this was perfect. Exactly as expected for the style, exactly as expected for the ABV. Um, they can kind of be all over the place with what happens when you start to agitate. This one got nice, a lot noticeably thicker and a lot creamier. It was absolutely fantastic. Mouthfeel gets a 10 out of 10. For the finish, the finish on this was really just high end of average. It was not as long as you would expect for a barley wine for starters, certainly at a 12.2%, but then adding the barrel aging on top. I'm not saying it was short or truncated, but it definitely wasn't as long as I anticipated. I gave it a six out of 10. For the head and the retention, this was one of those uh, categories. Again, barley wines are kind of all over the place. This one did a very, very good job. Uh, not really the norm, but it did a great job. Formed a nice creamy head that stuck around nearly the entire time. Head and retention gets a nine out of 10. For the appearance, this was textbook English barley wine, that kind of brown color, not the little lighter kind of caramel color, but the English variant of barley wines are typically a little darker. This fit perfectly in that range. Appearance gets a 10 out of 10. For the balance, I talked about this when I talked about the flavor, the balance was absolutely fantastic. Uh, the right amount of malts in the right ratios, a really well chosen yeast strain, and the barrel that they picked and the length of time in it, everything worked beautifully together, masterfully balanced. Balance gets a perfect 10 out of 10. Feeling in the intangible, subjectively, I loved it. I'm a big barley wine fan. I love barrel aged beers as well. This was a well done version of both, barrel aged or barley wine. Absolutely loved it. Feeling in the intangible gets a 10 out of 10. Finally, as an example of the style, uh, this was just a well done barley wine. Um, English barley wine at that and barrel aged at that. Uh, only lost a few points in a few categories, most notably in the finish, but honestly, not meeting my expectation is not really a knock for uh, the style and frankly it did extremely well in all other categories and I do sincerely believe this is a top tier example of what an English style barley wine can and should be. I give it full points, 10 out of 10, which brings the total score on Fremont Brewing Company's Brew 5000 to a 92 out of 100. So just another absolute top tier beer from Fremont. I've come to expect this from them. I have yet to be disappointed. Just an absolutely delicious and well crafted beer. If you're a barley wine fan and you can snag yourself a bottle of this, it was a limited release. Don't know how many there are left. It's definitely worth your time. Folks, that's today's review. As always, I do sincerely appreciate you tuning in today. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to stay in the loop when our videos go live, just turn on your notifications, hit that bell icon. It's right next to the subscribe button. Until next time, keep it beer, keep it craft. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.